Hello, this is Dr. Gandhi. Welcome to my video on creating a graph of the standard normal distribution using Microsoft Excel. I'm going to recreate the worksheet I have displayed here in this worksheet. And this is a graph of the standard normal distribution, which is a special case of the normal distribution. The standard normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So I've configured this graph to display the normal distribution in blue. You can see that here toward the right. And then the area under the curve in green. And I can adjust that with this scroll bar. So for example, if I move the scroll bar so that it's set to zero, so x equals zero, you can see that's 50% the area under the curve is 50%. If I adjust it to say uh, negative one, you see the area of the curve is 15.87%. So exactly what we would expect for a normal distribution. And of course these values would be the same, uh, the area of the curve values for a standard normal distribution. So moving to the new uh, worksheet, you can see I've copied over the headings, x, normal distribution area, and I have the values negative 3, 2.9, all the way down to 3. And I did that just by entering in the 3 and the 2.9, selecting them both, and then auto-filling down. So we'll start with calculating the normal distribution value. And there are a couple ways that uh, this can be done. So first I'll start with the norm.dist function. And first it asks for x. So I'll specify that, that's a2. Then it asks for the mean and the standard deviation. And remember with a standard normal distribution, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. In this case, I'm gonna want the probability mass function. That's the value false for this argument. And you can see it gives me a value of 0 0.044. Now I could arrive at the same value using the norm.s.dist function, which returns the standard normal distribution. So in this case, I just need to supply it with the z value, in this case, negative three. And here, false refers to the probability density function. You see though it's the same value. So two different functions that can give you the same value in this case because we are working with a standard normal distribution. So then I want to autofill this function all the way down to three. And you'll notice that the value for three is the same as the value for negative three. As a matter of fact, all the corresponding values from negative to positive are identical. So if we were to take negative 2.5, you can see it's 0 0.017. If we go down to 2.5, we can see it's 0 0.017. And the normal distribution value for zero, 0.39. Next, I want to build a function to calculate the area. But in order to start building this function, I need to have the value that the scroll bar produces. So I'm gonna to have to put the scroll bar in next. So I'm gonna do that by going to developer and then insert. And you can see there are form controls and ActiveX controls. Either one will work, but I'm gonna use a form control in this case. And the form control I'm going to select is referred to as the scroll bar. I'm just going to drag it onto the worksheet. And it has settings that I can access by selecting it and then right clicking and then clicking format control. And here I'm going to want to set the minimum value to 10 and the maximum value to 70. I'm going to leave the incremental change at 1, 
and the page change at one. I want to link it to a cell. In this case, I'm just going to select uh, D6. And I'm going to set the current value as a value in the range, uh, let's say 10. Then click OK. And you can see it put the value 10 into cell D6. Now, if I were to operate the scroll bar by clicking on the right arrow, you can see it increments the value in D6 by a value of 1, and it'll go all the way up to 70. So in order to convert this into a value that can be used by the graph, in this case a z-score, I'm going to have to create another function here. And I'll create that in E6. And this will be equal to the value in D6 divided by 10. And I don't have to do this, but I'm going to put these in parentheses just to keep this clearly separated. And then subtract the value 4. So you can see now 10 is converted to negative 3, the lowest value. And it will go all the way up to 3. Now at this point, we don't need to have this displayed anymore. So this could be put uh, somewhere else on the worksheet or the font color could be changed to white so it would be not visible. Uh, but I'm just going to leave it up so you can see how it changes as I move the scroll bar and how the Z value changes. So now we can go back to putting in the function under area. And we'll start with the if function. So this is going to be equal to if, open parentheses, a2 is less than or equal to the value in E6. I'm going, to, I'm going to press F4 to make that an absolute reference. So if that's the case, so if A2 is less than or equal to E6, I want the value displayed here to be the normal distribution value found in B2. Now if it's not less than or equal to E6, I want it to be blank, so I'm just going to put two quotation marks and then close the parentheses and you can see the area here appears because this value is less than or equal to the value in E6, in this case less than. And now I'm going to autofill this down and that's why I made the E6 an absolute reference because I don't want that to move. And you can drag this all the way down to 3, but since we have values already in the adjacent columns, we can just get the autofill crosshairs and double click, and it'll autofill automatically down to row 62. So now at the scroll bar, I'm going to move down to a value that will appear on the screen here. And you see 1.5, 1.5 down here. So it displays all these values, but no more than that. I move to 1.4, it adds that on. So this will be used to display the area under the curve. So now I'm ready to insert the chart. So I'm first going to select X in the normal distribution headings and control shift down arrow. So I'm going to select all the data under them. And then go to insert and take a look at the charts that are available. Now I went to recommended charts, but I'm actually going to go to the all charts tab in that dialog. And I'm looking for the area chart and specifically this one on the right. I'll click OK. And I'm going to make some changes to this. I'm going to size it so it fits nicely in the area that's displayed here. And I'm going to change it, the back color to black. Makes it stand out a little more. So you can see we have a graph here of the standard normal distribution based on the data in columns A and B. And because this has a mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1, I could go up here and put the word standard in front. It's a standard normal distribution. And now I want to add 
the area under the curve onto the same graph. So first I want to display the area under the curve numerically. And I'll do that here in E10. Start with equal sign and then norm dot s dot dist. We'll use the standard normal distribution. And the first argument is z, so that'll be the value from E6. And then we have an argument true or false available. This, this time we're going to want true, the cumulative distribution function. And for a z of negative 1, the area of the curve is 15.87, and that is correct. And I'll make this color, this back color, uh, green. Make it stand out a little more. And now to add the area onto the graph, I'm going to click into the uh, graph itself and then right click. And we're going to want to select data. We want this dialog, select data source dialog. And you can see normal distribution is here, and all the values of x are here on the right. We're going to want to click Add, and it's going to first ask for a series name. I'm going to select C1, that's right, area, and then series values. And I'm going to select C2 all the way down to row 62, even though uh, many of these are empty, I'm going to select all of them. Then click OK, and you'll see this is checked off. Click OK again. And we can see it has added area onto this graph of the standard normal distribution. So now if I move with the scroll bar, if I change the value, the Z value, you can see the area under the curve adjusts not only here in this function in E10, but also on the uh, graph itself. Modifying the colors here is easy enough if we select this area and then go to Format Data Series. We can go to Fill, and right now it's set to Automatic. Go to Solid Fill and change this to, say, green, and close this. And we can also change the color by right-clicking, and right up here there's a option for fill. So we could choose fill, and say we wanted to make it uh, orange. You can just select it right from here, too. So there's a couple different ways to change that. Uh, but I'm going to leave it as uh, green. And now, again, as we adjust this, the area of the curve is going to adjust in this function, but also graphically uh, on the graph of the standard normal distribution. In addition to using these arrows to move or to change the z value, you can also drag the bar uh, and quickly change the z value like I went from below zero there to two very quickly you can see 97.72 percent of the areas under the curve here so this is a little faster uh, for a little more of a fine control you can use the arrows I hope you found this video on building a graph of the standard normal distribution to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.